soldiers, weapons, equipment, supplies, and reinforcements. All this and more needs to move swiftly into a battle zone in minimum possible time. Rapid mobility of troops on the ground is so crucial a factor that it can make or mar the chances of winning a battle. This is where the Corps of Engineers steps in. During operations, uh, our role can be broadly divided into three uh, parts, that is uh, mobility, counter-mobility and survivability. Expeditious movement of troops in military combat zones involves identifying eradicating and taming all the natural and man-made obstacles lying in their way. In some war efforts, combat engineers are the first to enter the battlefield to facilitate mobility of troops that follow. They construct tracks, bridges, helipads and ropeways for enabling movement of men and equipment. In areas suspected to have been mined by the enemy, it is the engineer's job to detect and defuse the landmines, making it safer for the troops to enter and operate. The combat engineers also make paths for battle tanks, infantry combat vehicles, large trucks and field guns to be transported to the theater of operations. There are four pillars of the Corps of Engineers. We have the combat engineers, then we have the military engineering service, then we have the border roads, and we have the military survey. Each one of these engineering units performs an enabling role during war as well as peace. The army engineers are also known as sappers. Sappers are engineers by qualification. They also train in armed combat as infantry soldiers. During war, these engineers fight alongside the infantry after executing their engineering tasks. The combat engineers are experts in constructing and commissioning bridges in a very short time. They deploy a wide lineup of bridges in combat zones, suited to the landscape and demands of the battle. The engineers' arsenal includes both mechanically as well as manually launched bridges. Weighing 5,700 kilograms, the AM-50 bridge is a Tatra truck mounted mechanically launched bridge. Each bridge covers a gap of 12.5 meters. A set of four vehicles can bridge up to 52 meters of gap. With each bridge taking up to seven minutes to launch, the AM-50 bridge is preferred by the engineers, especially when they are hard pressed for time. This bridge can withstand a load of up to 70 tons. This four meter wide bridge can be launched by a crew of three engineers. A 54 meter wide water obstacle can be conquered in well under 30 minutes. Such rapid deployment could give the ground forces an upper hand against the enemy troops. Working on the principles of buoyancy, the Czech origin PMS folding pontoon bridge makes bridging over water obstacles a relatively easier task. Mounted on vehicles, this bridge is kept on Tatra trucks in a folded position. At the site of action, it is dropped into water where it unfolds to form a wide decked bridge almost immediately. Many such pontoons can be joined together to launch bridges up to 100 meter long and 5.5 meter wide. The engineers also deploy Kropman heavy floating assault bridges for tackling water obstacles wider than 100 meters. 
The German origin Krupp mount bridges use members made of heavy duty aluminum alloy. These are mounted on rubber floats, generally used for crossing rivers. These bridges have a load capacity of up to 50 tons. While laying bridges in the battlefield, a combat engineer has to also factor in locally available resources and peculiarities of the terrain while taking decisions. At the particular site, he should be able to decide within a split second which may affect the entire operation. That is what is intellectual sharpness. He, his decision will affect the entire operation. Some bridges are stored in modular forms for ease of transportation by road, water or by air using helicopters. Upon reaching the launch site, the modular components are quickly assembled and launched without wasting even a moment. In the Himalayan region, the army engineers have constructed several bridges including a large number of Bailey suspension bridges across rivers and deep gorges. As part of the survival tasks, the engineers also construct trenches, bunkers, and make provision for supplying electricity in the battle zone. They also help in countering improvised explosive devices. Combat engineers also hold the responsibility of removing mines and unexploded explosives planted by the enemy forces. In addition to defusing landmines, they also lay mines to weaken the adversary and slow down enemy advancement. Depending upon the threat perception, the engineers lay different types of mines in sufficient numbers to deter the enemy. India is a signatory to the United Nations Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons. The Indian Army adheres to the guidelines governing the use of landmines outlined in Protocol 2 of this convention. This protocol deals with the prohibitions or restrictions on the use of mines, buoy traps and other devices. Once the mines are planted and concealed, the mined area is suitably fenced and marked so as to forewarn people about the presence of landmines. Mines again can be classified into three different types. Anti-tank mines, the anti-personal mines, mine inflammable. These mines basically tend to delay the enemy because when you are occupying defenses, you will have more time to find out as to what the enemy is aiming for. Mobility to the enemy can also be denied by demolishing bridges by using explosives. Here, explosives of suitable strengths are placed in water under the enemy bridge. Once detonated, the explosion sends up a high-power water jet forceful enough to blast the concrete and metal used in the bridge. Combat engineers are also trained to deal with nuclear, biological and chemical warfare. Their special skills are deployed in decontaminating the affected individuals, vehicles and the area in general. There are a lot of times when you may not have those resources, you may have different situations and the way you react to these are not tailor-made. You see, you have to be ingenious and a lot of time you have to improvise and all situations are different. In the year 2010, the devastating cloudburst in Leh in the state of Jammu and Kashmir had created havoc on an unprecedented scale. The local civil administration felt completely handicapped in tackling this colossal tragedy. The army engineers along with the civil administrative authorities took upon the challenge of restoring civil infrastructure on a war footing. And within just one month, most of the roads had become motorable and most of the bridges had been rebuilt. Normalcy in the region was restored much faster than what the civic administration had expected. With Sarvatra, meaning omnipresent as their motto, the sappers are often the first ones to move into the battlefield and the last ones to leave.
With their ingenuity and unwavering commitment to serve the nation, their proven ability to stand up to any challenge, their capacity to improvise, and their gumption to fight armed battles, the sappers have always been trailblazers during war and during peace.